Hi, hello, my name is Mark Lloyd. I'm here today to talk about two of my paintings uh, that are here on display at the Enns Cafe in Boscombe in Bournemouth. I'd like to uh, take the opportunity to thank uh, Steve Vertuga and everybody at the Enns for helping display my paintings that are here on show in the cafe. Um, yeah, so I'm here to talk about kind of what they're about and, and uh, how they were constructed. And the first painting I'm going to talk about uh, has a big title but is kind of commonly been called Daisy Daisy. So this painting I started in 2013 and took about a year to, to finish. Um, it's constructed or the composition is based using the theories of Piero della Francesca which is an artist from the Renaissance and I used his composi compositional theories to kind of construct the painting. Um, it's made of uh, various paints, oil, acrylic, spray paint, resin, uh, and iridescent pigments, which is a new uh, material that I'm starting to use. The painting is about evolution. And uh, I'm gonna talk you through some of the kind of icons or some of the features that appear on the painting. First of all, um, if we work our way through the top of the painting, from the top far left, we have two kind of human figures. Those two human figures were the figures taken off the 19, I think it was 1969 Voyager satellite that was sent out um, to, dis to explore the solar system and on this uh, satellite they put um, evidence of, of human life on earth and these are the two images that they chose to represent the human race. Working along the painting as we walk up towards the, the top right we have the skull uh, kind of faded into the background and this is the first skull of the first ape that walked on two feet. As I start working down the painting uh, you'll notice that there's text and the text is a verse uh, the, from the song Daisy Daisy which is repeated twice. Um, the reason that, that this text is chosen um, is because it was the first text that was used for a computer to speak. So it was the first human sound or human language that a computer spoke uh, for the IBM company. Um, you'll notice that the two, the two verses are actually slightly different in terms of the typeface that's used. I tried to use on the top part of the typeface more of a kind of an organic, natural colours and natural feel to the top typeface. The second verse of uh, the song Daisy Daisy is on the bottom. It's used a lot of the typeface from some of the biggest computer companies. For example, we have Dell, Apple, um, Google, letters from Google. IBM, etc. So there's a contrast there between the two uh, verses and the two typeface and the two songs, whereas one is kind of intended to be more organic and natural, and the second more influenced by obviously computers and technology, etc. As we come to the bottom of the painting, we've got a graph, and this graph represents kind of the paradox of the painting, really, help, helps to suggest the paradox of the painting. And this graph is from the theory of uncanny valley. So the two perhaps most important things that kind of suggest or kind of give um, the true kind of meaning or show some of the true meaning of the painting are the graph at the bottom and also at the top, in the top right hand corner it says the Omega point and it's the theory about the Omega point and where we've reached a point in human history or human evolution where we can't evolve physically much further. And that's kind of what the painting is starting to suggest, that through our technology is the future of human e evolution. However, we reach the paradox at the bottom, where uh, the paradox of uncanny valley, where when things become too human-like, too simulated, we have this natural inbuilt revulsion. So the painting really is about the paradox of future evolution of mankind. Uh, this painting, uh, also one thing I didn't mention in the background, because a big influence for me in making this painting was the work of Stanley Kubrick in 2001 The Space Odyssey. And you can kind of see uh, in the background the monolith and uh, a view from 2001 The Space Odyssey. I hope that explains some of the uh, ideas and conceptual thinking behind the painting. There are kind of many narratives pulled into this um, and there's nothing answered. The questions are just posed. Um, okay, and I'll talk about the second painting now. So this is the second painting that is here on display at the Ends Cafe. And this painting, which is called uh, Everything is Possible and Nothing is Certain, 
is uh, a painting which is based on kind of or around the ideas and concepts of notions of reality. Um, again, I've used the compositional ideas from the Renaissance and this painting has been based on kind of the Fibonacci sequence, the kind of spiral effect. And if you look through the painting, we start with the rabbit coming up. I've changed some of the colour of the text. So there's this flow, this spiral that comes up through the blocks, round through to the spoon to the centre of the painting. So we've got this kind of hidden spiral that's kind of looping into the painting. Some of the themes in the painting are from narratives of... Uh, Fiction and literature that deal with questions of reality or travelling into other worlds or other realities. I've got uh, the Alice in Wonderland white rabbit, which is actually Albert Durer's rabbit. I've got some of the themes from the film The Matrix. And uh, there's some other things in here that are hidden that talk about questioning the nature of reality. Um, the text is a quote from The Matrix. And... Uh, I've actually played with the text. Um, some of the key features in the text uh, are highlighted. For example, wake up, which is about the notion of waking up into a, the meaning of the truth or the true reality. Um, and they've got the drip coming down into the center of the rabbit. Um, other suggestions uh, that are in the painting is room 101 uh, from um, George Orwell's uh, uh, literature the meaning of things that are hidden um, and there's many other hidden meanings in this painting. So I mentioned the spiral uh, which I took from the Renaissance painting. Uh, you will note that on the cubes um, and if we take the, the sphere in the centre it spells out the word apotheses. Also we have this word um, in the letters in some of the letters on the text A, P, O, T, H, E, O, S, I, S the word apotheses. So that's the question I'm leaving for the viewer, is about this concept of hypotheses. So that's it really. These two paintings are hopefully going to be on display at the Agora Gallery in New York, uh, August the 22nd. Um, I'm currently trying to raise funds uh, to make that show happen. So please contact me through my website, which is lloydfineart.com, or on Facebook, Mark Lloyd F uh, Artist, um, Twitter, Mark Lloyd Artist, um, and Instagram, Lloyd Fine Art. I'd also, just finally, I'd just like to thank everybody who's helped put these paintings on display here. Um, that's the Ends Cafe. Uh, Fred from France for all his help, fantastic. And um, yeah, please contact me if you can help contribute to make this show in New York happen. Thank you.